Hey members, so we did a live stream test um, earlier on and I just asked anybody if they had anything they wanted to see or any questions. Um, and one of the things that I think it was Nick Haler asked for was um, uh, a little bit around shadow boxing with a dagger. So I thought I'd do a little bit on that. So let's break this up into two sections, okay? Let's talk about drilling and then shadow boxing with a dagger. So in terms of drilling, um, it's quite hard to drill on your own with a dagger. Most of us will be familiar with, in fact, all of us will be familiar with just our standard Culpi drill, okay? So attacks with a dagger. Um, you can spice that up a little bit, but most of us will be used to just, you know, Bendente, straight down, from the left, exposing the elbow, a bit risky, but there, and just a thrust, okay? Important things about that, just as a recap, is that we're using our second hand as well, okay? So we're always trying to attack through a frontally type position, okay? Because it's Abbott, sorry, and dagger. And Fury's approach to dagger is that you're using your offhand as much as you're using your dagger. Um, what we're not doing is what we'll see in some other systems, Germanic systems particularly, where they're tucking this hand behind them or even putting it on their hip. They're starting up high like this and they're doing these large sweeping type actions to hook arms and things like that. That's not the approach Fiori is taking, it's completely different. Okay, he's doing this armoured and unarmoured and situationally the whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of reasons why it's, it's completely different, his approach. So we're always coming through frontally. Oh, as I said, you can spice it up too. So you can do two strikes here. Yeah? One, two, and initially we're just always attacking in and then recovering, attacking and recovering, okay? Because nine times out of 10, dagger on dagger, that's the distance you're gonna be at, okay? So that's draw number one. Draw number two um, is the one that I posted up the other day, okay? So our nine master drill that we take through level one. Um, initially, it's literally, and it says it's a paired drill. But initially, it's just going through your masters, okay? So it's first master, second master, third master, and so on and so forth, okay? You can do that drill solo, all right? You can just practice those masters, okay? So practice sixth master. Again, you can have a stick, a bottle, or you don't have to have a dagger, but, you know, you, whatever you want. Seventh master, and you can start evolving that as well, even on your own. So... The idea of that drill is that we add plays to it as we go through our as our, our through our levels and then we start to make it random. You can add the plays you know now and you can look at the manuscript and ask us questions. Hey, I've been looking at the seventh play of First Master Dagger. How do I do that? You can keep learning even during this awful lockdown. So you can go for it solo. So depending on what techniques you know from the first master for example you know you can you can practice yeah seventh boom boom yeah you can you can practice those yeah sixth master as an example yeah cover point in butt out that's your strip from sixth master you can do that as a drill and if you want some structure to that drill just keep following the masters one two three four for fifth, which we normally drop in level one as part of that drill, so we call it the nine master drill, but we drop fifth and add that in later. You can still do that, okay? If you know the plays of fifth, pretend someone's grabbing a hold of you. <laughs> practice covering down, practice securing and hitting the elbow. You can do all of this slowly, fast, doesn't matter. And then you can start adding some more flavor, okay? So you can be nice and aggressive as long as we're remembering the intent and what this thing is for okay it doesn't matter how fast you do it but as long as we are trying to visualize an opponent especially for our own and getting in there doing the play recovering at the end of everything or pushing home then you can do those two drills quite well in isolation in terms of a shadow boxing type approach well the whole thing about shadow boxing is that it develops in the same way as our master drill Okay, so let's take it from a purely boxing perspective. I'll try and stay in front of you there. Um, initially, it's just going through set pieces. Okay, so we're going, boom, boom, boom. you know, we're just shadow boxing, we're moving. Yeah, we're practicing our motion, ducking and weaving, all the rest of it, but we're, we're just going through the motions. Then when you start to become advanced and you start shadow boxing, you're visualizing things. Okay, so if I'm just pretending I'm boxing now, yeah, if someone's coming down low, I'm pretending to cover, boom, 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 and I'm just, I'm always visualizing. Oh, I got one, two, and that's, me shadow boxing now at an intermediate stage okay where you're imagining things coming in and you're moving and reacting off of, you know, you're reacting off of certain things same if you're going to shadow box with a dagger we have to keep our 
context there, okay? Fury's approach to Dagger is very fast, short series of actions, okay? This will reactive, reactive, reactive. So bear that in mind, but pretend, okay? So I'm stood here like this, so I'll pick something from there. Let's pretend someone's making a high attack at me. Cover, attack. Now I've got a choice. Initially, it can be attack and recover. So cover, attack, and recover, yeah? Or if it's from the other side, cover, push the arm, attack, and recover. So that's just defense, attack, recover. Defense, attack, recover. Depending on your level or how far you want to take it, you can then start adding things into that as well. So maybe two attacks. Let's come from low. So cover, cover, one, two, recover. Yeah, so boom, come on, two, and we're out. Yeah. The point of it, if you're gonna shadow box with a dagger, as I said, is always trying to visualize something that might be happening, but don't stray too far away from what the system is for. There's very little point in a, in a with a weapon as dynamic as dagger, with the distances involved, going through big sequences of flow drills. There's no point, because if I'm just flowing, I'm teaching myself bad habits. That's not how this thing works. That's why we don't have any flow drills with our dagger stuff, because it's cover, attack, attack, recover, yeah? Or cover, attack, there's an arm, ligadura, whatever. We, that's how dagger fighting works. There's no flow drills as such, because this is gonna teach you bad habits. So look, that's just a couple of thoughts, non-scripted. You could, you know, as I say, be in your bedroom, be in your garden, whatever you want. But if you're gonna um, shadow box with a dagger, it all comes back to that imagining things happening to you. Low cover, strip, punch. That's then bringing it back to your training as opposed to just empty space practice. That's me two pence worth, hope it's helpful. Create your own drills um, and have fun and maybe share them back with the group. Cheers and be safe. Wash your hands.